Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be another in my series of RHCSA practice sessions and the topic for this particular video is under the Create Simple Shell Scripts um, objective set and it is processing output of shell commands within a script. I want to remind you that these aren't necessarily intended to be authoritative in nature but it's an opportunity for me to show how I would handle um, certain scenarios that may or may not come up in your RHCSA exam as it relates to these particular objectives. Before I dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video and also want to invite anyone that enjoyed the content of this video or think is useful to make sure you click like. And if you have not subscribed yet, make sure you click the subscribe button and ring the bell when you do. So that way you can be aware of when new content comes available. So without further ado, let's jump into processing output of shell commands within scripts. The example I'm going to use for this concept is a bit contrived because I can think of a more efficient way of doing it, but it will show you um, what this idea of processing output of shell commands w within a script can be. Of course, I'm not 100% sure exactly how this would um, be implemented into the exam, and even if I were, I wouldn't be able to share it because of non-disclosure agreements, but this is what, what I think might occur on the exam that would be related to, to this topic. And at the very least, it, it, it's a good skill to understand, or not necessarily skill, but it's good to have um, knowledge of how to deal with output of uh, different shell commands within the script. So what I'm going to do here is go into my TMP directory. We're going to make a little test directory. And within this test directory, we're going to make some more directories. And we'll do sub dir one and so I need to do dash P. We'll do the same thing for sub dir 2. I do not need the leading slash, otherwise it's going to try to put that at the very root. probably have used um, some shell expansion to be able to make this a little bit more efficient, but it's beyond the scope of what we're doing here. All right. And there's our directories. And what I'm going to do is change the permissions on this to 777. So the example I'm going to show is, let's say that you have um, a particular script in your environment, and the point of this script is remediating permissions for directories. You know, your company has a particular default that you want all your directories to be, and so if you were to take over a new system, this is the script that you would run to fix whatever permissions are on, on your directories back to uh, 755, which is uh, what we're going to use in this uh, example. Now, of course, this is a bit of a you know, contrived example, but it will handle the task, I think, pretty well. So I'm going to go back into the TMP folder. Let's start with our script. Now, before I start uh, typing out what I want to do, one thing to keep in mind is you always need to think through how you want to solve a problem before trying to write your script. And that sounds kind of obvious, but it really will save you some time in the end if you have a, a, a bit of an idea of what's going on beforehand. I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner of, of this video that will link to a, another one I did about scripting where I go in depth a bit about my process of developing scripts. And even though I know on the exam you're not going to have you know, copious amounts of time, but if you do have an objective that's asking you to write a script, it's always a good idea to think for a minute, how are you going to solve the problem before you try writing the script? For this, what I intend to do is use the find command to find any directories that do not have the 755 permission and then we're going to loop through each of those directories, setting it to the appropriate permission of 755. Now, I want to go ahead and say that a more efficient way of doing this would probably be using the dash exec flag 
in the find command and just setting the, the permissions there. But for the purpose of this particular script and working with the objective processing output of shell commands within the script, we're going to use a loop to be able to make that happen. So we'll do our shebang bin bash. And what we'll do, we'll, we'll make this uh, interactive. So we'll ask, we'll do an echo, which you don't necessarily have to do this particular echo statement. You can do it as a part of the next command, but I like doing it as an echo statement just because it makes it a little bit more obvious what's going on in my script. So I'm going to ask the user to please enter a directory. Then we're going to use the read command to read a value from standard input. We're going to put this value into a variable named path to fix. So from there, what we're going to do is for i in, we're going to do a subshell and we're going to find path to fix type directory, not perm 755. So we want everything that does not have 755 as, as its permission. Now, one thing I suggest you do when you're working with your script, both in and outside of the exam, is let's say that you have a command here that you maybe you're not as familiar with, or you just want to make sure that it's going to do what you need before you officially put it into your script, kind of as a little test. And you can do that by just having your terminal window open along with your text editor. And so I'm going to do a find with the directory that I intend to use the script on type d not perm 755 and that should return all of these directories because none of them are set to 755 because just a moment or so ago we set them all to 777 so within our for loop we will do i'm actually going to add an echo statement saying fixing I, which will give you the name of the directory that's being fixed, and then we'll change mode 755 for the directory I. And then done, and that's basically the script. Before I officially do this though, and I would suggest that you probably do something similar on, on your exam, I'm actually going to comment out this change mode because I want to run the script once just to make sure that it's actually going to um, to be seen, or it's actually going to affect what I want it to affect. Because remember, with a for loop, you know, by default, your delimiter is going to be uh, space, which in this case, I know it's not going to be a problem. I don't have any spaces in file names. But you might need to account for that, such as changing the, uh, the IFS variable to use a different delimiter. So it's a, a good idea to, to do some tests as you're working. So I'm going to save this in the temp directory since I'm already there. We'll call it um, shell test dot sh. All right, there's our shell test dot sh. Let's change mode to where it is executable. And let's try it. So it's prompted me to enter a directory. I'm going to put temp test. All right. And then it's complaining about line 10. So let's see what's, ah, I see what I've done. It's kind of obvious. I'm sure those of you watching the video have been going, all right, Eddie, when are you going to fix your variable there? We'll take away the dash. And let's see how well it works this time. So TMP test. All right. So the directories it's found it is doing what, what I intend for, for this to do, which is fix these directories. And so now I'll be confident enough to uncomment the change mode line and we'll run it once again. We'll put in our directory says it, it fixed all of that. So let's do a ls-lr on test. And sure enough, all of these directories have read, write, execute for the user, and then just read and execute 
for the other and for the group and the other user. So really that's that, that that's all there is to it as far as processing output of shell commands within a script. Personally, I'm kind of surprised that it is an objective because you know, a lot of your scripts, this is what, what you're going to be doing. You know, you'll, you'll be gathering some type of information and then acting on that information. So I think working on the other objectives will make you do what's happening in this objective, but just to, to, to give it its own time, what we're doing here is processing the output of the shell command find and then feeding it into a loop. And then for us, we're changing the permissions on the folders. Feel free to leave any comments or ask questions uh, about this concept or, or, or any others for the RHCSA. I'll answer them as I'm able and both have and have time. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure you click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do and ring the bell. So that way you can be aware of when new content comes available. And I'll see you the next time.